Hey, what's going on everyone? This is iReviews back with another video and we're getting very close to the release of iOS 17 to the public with the RC version probably coming out as soon as tomorrow. If not, it will most likely come the next week after the iPhone 15 event. So in this video, I will show you guys 10 facts that you need to know regarding iOS 17 before of course you try to update your device to the new iOS 17. Now first of all, we're talking about features that Apple has actually shown us at WWDC 2023, but they're not coming with the release of iOS 17 in September. First of all, collaboration for Apple Music playlists that's a pretty cool feature coming to ios 17 but not with the initial release and of course it's nowhere to be found on the current betas of ios 17 so we will have to probably wait for 17.1 or 17.2 to see this feature being released another one is the new journal applet apple is introducing with ios 17 this one also is not coming with the initial release of ios 17 again we will probably have to wait later this year to get this new app on our devices. There will be also new emojis coming to iOS 17, but not with iOS 17.0, most likely with 17.1 as usually Apple adds the new emojis with the 0.1 or even 0.2 update. And another one is name drop, but of course name drop is currently here, but it will only work with iPhones and iPads. It won't work with the Apple Watch. So yes, in the future, you will be able to name drop to your Apple Watch or of course to other people's Apple Watches but not with the initial release of watchOS and of course iOS 17 that is coming in a couple of weeks. Of course if you have been around and you know a few things about iOS 17 you must know that this software update won't support the older devices that supported iOS 16 and those are the iPhone 10 and also the iPhone 8 and the 8 plus so the oldest device to support iOS 17 will be the iPhone 11. Now when it comes to those devices, those devices will also be missing some features. And one of them will be standby mode. Now the standby mode is currently available on all devices, but it doesn't work the same. If you have a device with the always on display, it will stay on of course as long as you have it on a place and charging. But if you have an older device, of course those devices are older than the iPhone 14 Pro, then it will stay like this for only 15 seconds and the screen will then dim. The only way to bring it back is to tap on the screen. Again, it stays on for 15 seconds and it dims back again. So the only way to basically get the full standby feature is to have a device with the always on display. A few features will be missing on FaceTime as well. So on a FaceTime call, when you go to your control center and you access the video settings, you will notice that on newer devices, you will have a few more options here. If you have an iPhone 11 or, or the iPhone 10R, you will only see the studio light here. On other devices, you will have the portrait feature as well as the reaction features. These are features again that won't be available on the oldest devices that currently support iOS 17. All the other devices, the iPhone 12 and newer, will of course get all the new features. There will be also accessibility features that are actually missing on older devices as well. So on accessibility, there is a feature coming to iOS called point and speak. We can just point the camera towards the text and it will speak the text for you. Well, that feature will only work on devices that have a LiDAR scanner. So the iPhone 12 Pro and newer, you will have to have that like black dot that's on the back here, the camera, that's a LiDAR scanner. If you have that, then you will get this feature, otherwise you won't. And there's also the new personal voice. This will also work on newer devices as well. So it basically uses AI to recognize your voice and then it will create your voice for you so you can speak any text using your voice. That again, won't come to the older devices. Now, when it comes to new updates, of course, one of the main things that we're interested on is the battery life. How good of battery life are we getting with this software update? Well, in my experience, the battery life on iOS 17 has been good, not the best. Sometimes it has been really, really bad. Sometimes it has been better. And in the last few days, I got some pretty good battery lives here. So you can see right there with the latest betas at 
almost 100% battery life. I got nine hours, 42 minutes on screen and you can see right here the battery health at 89% we're going to talk about that in a second here and then yesterday here around maybe 90% battery 7 hours 37 minutes now when I just use it as usual like the daily stuff it gets quite good battery life but at times when I may be out somewhere and I have to use cellular it actually gets really really bad so just don't expect anything like really good from the battery life on iOS 17. If you have an iPhone on iOS 16 currently, you will probably get about the same battery life as you get with iOS 17. Now, when it comes to battery health, you probably have heard about some reports regarding the battery health dropping really, really fast when devices have been updated to iOS 17. Now, I don't think this is a problem of iOS 17. It is actually a problem of the iPhone 14 series. Now, right here, you can see it's not even a year yet, and this iPhone has dropped to 89%. Usually, I would have around 93, maybe 94 at this point of time with other devices like the iPhone. 12 pro or the 13 pro max but you can see right here it has actually dropped quite a lot and a lot of this has happened this summer during the time that i have used ios 17 so i'm not blaming this on ios 17 but expect your battery health to drop a few points once you update your device and that's actually quite normal because once you update your device a major release ios will check all of its components of course including the battery and will show you the real battery health that you have on your iphone now one thing i cannot complain about when it comes to ios 17 is performance this is the best score i got out of ios 17 with geekbench 6 and you can see that great score there on the multi-core score 7000 points that's really really great and it's probably around 300 to 400 more points than iOS 16.6, which is really, really great. And the single core score also is good. So we have 2,645 there, which is again a great score. And overall, iOS 17 has been performing really, really well since day one. Of course, there have been some bugs like that you would just like encounter on everyday use like the keyboard not showing up the app library not showing up but a lot of those have been fixed and it's actually really really good and since like beta 3 or 4 you wouldn't even notice that you're using a beta software when using ios 17 on daily basis so the release of iOS 17 is imminent. It will be released very, very soon, most likely on September 18th, if not even earlier. But what we currently have is beta 8, which will most likely be the last beta until we move to the RC version, which could happen as soon as tomorrow or maybe on Tuesday. If that doesn't happen, on the 4th or the 5th, I, I think here on the 4th it won't be possible because it's a holiday, but on the 5th it might be possible. If it doesn't happen, then it will happen on the 12th after the iPhone 15 event. So that's a key point to people that don't want to actually have the RC version. They just want to install the beta, the actually the public release of iOS 17. So you need to know that if you want to install the public release of iOS 17, you should not install the RC version on your device. So this is what you need to do to update your device from the beta that we're currently in to the public release. Right now is the time to turn off your updates right here, go to software update and make sure that you just turn off your dev or your public updates right here. Just turn them off and you're good to go. You won't get any of the new betas if they release any, I don't believe that will happen or the RC version. You will just get here the public release when it's released most likely again on 18th of September. So that's the way to actually move from the betas to the public release of iOS 17. Even though even if you install the RC version, it's still the same update, but a lot of people don't like to have that. They just want to install the public beta. And from now on, all you have to do is just turn them off here and just get straight to the public release. Now, if you have installed iOS 17 and you don't like it, and you want to downgrade to iOS 16, yes, that's possible. You can do that as long as Apple, of course, will sign iOS 16, you will be able to do that. Once iOS 17 gets released to the public, I will have a video out just explaining how you do that. It's actually not that hard. You can go back 
to iOS 16. But if you have a device on iOS 16 right now, I don't think there's a reason for you to downgrade from iOS 17 because it's a great, great update. And it will probably work on your device as fine as iOS 16, if not even better. And last but not least, let's talk about the release date and time. So I'm expecting this update. I'm like 99% sure that it will happen on September 18th. That will be a Monday. Usually Apple will release the update at around 10 a.m. Pacific time. So just check your time zone, just compare to 10 a.m. Pacific time, and you will get the exact hour when you can install iOS 17 on your device with all the great new features. So that's basically it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go ahead, leave a like, of course, subscribe for more iOS 17 videos. I'll see you on the next one.